If you ever wanted to create a Discord bot but don't know how, then this tutorial is for you. We'll run through everything from setting up your development environment all the way to creating your very first Discord command. So let's get started. The very first thing that you want to do is head over to code.visualstudio.com and download VS Code. You could technically use any code editor that you'd like, but VS Code is going to be perfect for this job. So just head over to the website, the link will be in the description and hit download for Windows or whatever operating system you're on, whether it's Mac OS or Linux, and just run through the default installation. The next piece of software that we'll need is Node.js. Head over to nodejs.org, again the link will be in the description, and download the installer and run through the default installation. If you're having trouble installing either Node or VS Code, then there's a bunch of tutorials online that can help you with it. Now you'll need to head over to the Discord Developer Console. The link is over here, and again the link will be in the description just like with all of these. Click on the Applications tab, and in here, we'll hit new application. We'll give our bot a name and it can be just like test bot because we're just testing things out and hit create. Once we've got this bot, you can customize a bunch of things here. You can add an app icon, description, tags, so that people can find your bot. And the most important thing that we need to do is head over to the bot section and say add bot. And yes, do it. And again, you can change the username of the bot, but we we'll won't bother with that for now. The one thing that you'll really need is the token. So you need to hit reset token button over here and this will give you a token ID. Make sure you keep the secret because anyone with access to this token is able to modify your bot and to actually run your bot. So hit copy and we are definitely not going to store this in our code that we upload to GitHub or wherever. We will store this in our environment file which will load inside our code. So we'll just say token equals and then the token that we copied over. All right, that's done that. Now that we have the bot created, we need to go to the auth2 and the URL generator. In here, we need to give the applications.commands and the bot permissions, and then give the bot administrator privileges. This will generate a URL at the bottom, and all you need to do is hit copy, and then paste it into your other tab. And in here, select the server that you want to add the bot to. In my case, it's the bot channel. And yes, authorize and I'm a human. Now that this is authorized, when you head over to your bot server, you will see that the bot is here and it's shown as offline. Now that we've got all the boring stuff out of the way, we can actually get to coding. So head over to VS Code and hit Control Backtick. And now we'll need to initialize our new project. We'll type in npm init to the console and you can just leave all the defaults inside of here and what this should do is it should give us the package.json. The package.json just keeps track of all of the different packages that we are gonna be installing in our project. So the packages that we actually need to install are as follows. The first package that we need is Discord.js builders. So type in npm i and then at Discord.js slash builders and hit enter. Now we're gonna rinse and repeat this process with a few other packages. The next package is discord.js slash rest. The next one is discord API types. And then we got discord.js itself. And those are all the packages that we need. So now we can create our main entry file. So we'll hit our new file and then we'll name it index.js. Very first thing that we need is we need to import the .env library as that's what we'll use to import our environment variable, which is the token. So we'll say require, and that should import all of our environment variables to the process.env object. Next up, we need to import all of the Discord libraries that we need. And lastly, we will need two other libraries that come directly installed with Node. One is the file system and the other one is for the path because we're going to be working with commands in a folder and we're going to be loading them dynamically to make it easier to manage. That will become a little bit clearer later on when we get to it. Now, with all of these libraries imported, we need to actually create our very first bot. And there's a wrapper class for the bot to make it a little bit easier to work with called client. And inside of the client, you specify all the intents that you want the bot to have. Now, what intents are, those are the things that the bot should be allowed to do in a server. For example, if you want access to guilds, you need to specify it in the intents that you want access to guilds. This is very important when you're bringing the bot to production because you don't want the bot to just be able to do anything on the server because then people might not trust the bot because they might think that the bot might be doing something they really don't want it to do, like delete the server. So we need to specify the intents. So let's do that now. So we create this new client class and inside here we say intents. And then the intents that we're going to be using is intents.flags.guilds. And we'll also need the intents flags.guild message. 
So what we're saying here is we want our bots to be able to have access to the guild and modify the servers and we also want the bot to be able to send messages on the server. Now the next thing that we want to do is get a list of all the commands that we want to have registered with the server. So when you go on our server and you type in let's say slash ping we want the bot to respond to Pong and we want to have all of these help messages to come along with it. But we don't want to write everything in our index.js file so we'll actually create a new folder called commands. And inside of here, we'll create our very first command called ping.js. Inside our ping, we need to import the slash command builder from the discord.js builders, and then we export our command. So as the data, we'll actually put in our command, which is gonna be slash command builder, and the name of our command, we'll just say, we'll just say ping. And then we want to give it a description of saying like replies, with Pong. And then we want to give it an execute function which specifies what the command should be doing when the command is executed. And in our case, all we're gonna do is reply with the word Pong. Right, so that is it. That is our very simple command. Now we need to get a list of all the commands in that folder and register it with our bot. Let's start off by getting a list of all the commands that we have in the commands folder. Right, so let's start to break this down a little bit. The commands array is going to store a list of all the commands that are in our commands folder. The client.commands is gonna be a collection of all the command names with the command functions. And this is just an easy way to access all of our commands anywhere in our program. The commands path holds the path to the commands. The underscore underscore dr name is just storing the path of our execution program. So if we execute the file, let's say from here, the intro folder, then the dr name is going to be specified as the intro folder and the join is gonna join it with the command. So we end up with a path that looks a little bit like this, which is the path to this commands folder. Now that we have a list of all the files with the commands, we need to actually load the commands into our program. So we go through all of the commands in our commands file over here. And with each file, we load in the command into a temporary command variable then we store the name and the command inside our clients.command object. And lastly, we also load the command as, a J as JSON into our commands array that will later register. Now, if you're wondering what this IntelliSense like this is, where it suggests a bunch of stuff for me so I don't have to type it out, this is actually called something called GitHub Copilot. And it's just a, an AI created by Microsoft using GPT-3 that creates code snippets for you so you don't have to go over to Stack Overflow and it just makes you write code a lot faster. It looks at all the code that you've written previously and then it gives you suggestions for what you might want to write. You can actually get GitHub Copilot from the VS Code extensions by going into the extensions tab and type in GitHub Copilot and just install this extension. It is currently in beta so you might be on the waiting list. I actually had to wait for about two months to get it but eventually you'll get it. Back to the bot. This is something called an event inside of Discord. And events on Discord happen at different stages. For example, the ready event happens whenever the bot first enters the Discord server. So when our bot first comes online, this ready function is gonna be called. And what we wanna do here is we want to register all of our commands if they haven't been registered already with every single server that this bot is on. What we need to do then is we need to first get all of the IDs of the servers that the bots are on. Servers are called guilds inside of Discord.js. So this is why we sell guild IDs and we also always refer to servers as guilds. So we get all the IDs from the servers and now we're gonna register them with all the servers. This rest command over here uses the token that we previously loaded from our environment variable over here. And if you're wondering if the file name has to be .env, then yes, it does. Because otherwise, if it's not .env, it can be .env.production or .env.whatever, but it has to be as .env first. Otherwise, the .env package is not gonna load our environment variables. So now let's register all of our commands with all the guilds. There is one other thing that I forgot to copy from the developer console. So back on the developer console, go to the all auth section, and then under general, copy the client ID. Just hit copy. And we are also going to store this in our environment variables as client ID. 
So back in here, the way we register all the commands is we use the REST API given to us by Discord. So the Discord API uses the token to first authorize ourselves with the servers, and then we send the REST command, registering all of the commands with our client ID and the guild. And we pass in all the commands that we have loaded previously from our commands array. So now every single command is going to be registered whenever the server starts. Right. So now we have all the commands registered. All we need to do now is actually execute them whenever the user specifies the command. We do this by, say, by specifying another event. And this event is called interaction create. So whenever the user types in slash ping into the server, there's gonna be an interaction created and we, we need to filter through the interaction to make sure that the command actually exists. And if it does exist, we're gonna execute it. So we'll say async interaction. And we're first gonna check if the interaction is actually a command because there's a bunch of other interactions that can happen. So if the interaction is not a command, we're just gonna completely ignore it and skip through it. However, if the interaction is a command, we're gonna see if we've got the command in our commands array. And lastly, now that we've got everything, we're gonna to try to execute the command. And we're gonna put this in our try and catch block in case the command has some syntax errors or whether the command has something inside of it that doesn't quite work. So this is kind of a nifty little try accept block. So the first thing we do is we try to execute that execute command that we specified in here. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna log it to our error console and we're also going to reply to the user who entered the command that there was an error executing the command. So the user knows that something went wrong. There's one last thing that we need to do and that is actually register the bot with our servers so that it actually shows up as online. And we say that by saying client.login and then we pass in our token. And that is it. That is our entire bot. That is everything we need to do. So now we can open up the console and say node and then dot and press enter. And of course, something doesn't work. In our case, we haven't installed the dot env module. So we can quickly fix that by saying npm i dot env. And now hopefully, nope, something doesn't work quite either. But this is actually a very good thing because I can show you how you can debug your code because it probably won't all work the first time you run it. So this is telling us that something went wrong on line 27. So on line 27, it says that command.name and that the property name does not exist on the command. Right, okay. So I know why our command is showing up as an empty object. That is because we're using module.export, but we forgot an S at the end, and it should be module.export. A little typo, that can happen to any of us. I will actually leave a GitHub link in the description. So if you have a typo, you should be able to just copy the file over and everything should work fine. Right, so now let's type in node dot again, and we can see we get no errors. It's saying that all the commands have been successfully registered with the guild. And when we go over to our bot server, we can see that the test bot is now online. And when you type in slash and then ping and press enter, the test bot is sending the command. <laughs> and it's saying the application did not respond. So we've got an error somewhere again. <laughs> there actually was another typo in here. So the command does not exist on the type interaction. So this was returning null, causing our command to just be an empty object again. And what we actually should have wrote is command name. So now when we start the server again, got all the commands registered successfully. And when we type in slash ping, we get pong. Back. So hopefully this will start you on, a, on your journey to creating whatever Discord bot you want. And you hopefully saw how you can debug your code when something does go wrong inside your code. So that is it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.